few have known him as well as this woman. Ten years after his death, one of his closest confidants has decided to come forward for the first time to talk to Chris about the JFK Jr. she knew. Chris? Rose Marie Terenzio, she is intensely loyal, and she didn't want to talk about John. She never breached that confidence until now, and it's for a, a very important reason. She has something she wants to tell you about that you have never heard of in all likelihood about John Kennedy, something that meant so much to him. It is information about John Kennedy Jr.'s living legacy. John F. Kennedy Jr. America watched him grow from young son to idealistic lawyer to loving husband. His life a constant media spectacle feeding the public's appetite. But in his private life, loyal friends meant everything. And one such friend came after a rocky introduction. You may be the only woman I know mm. who when you first met John, mm -hmm. you didn't like him. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say I didn't like him. I would say I was sort of indifferent to him, which is probably worse. Few people knew John better than Rosemary Terenzio, his personal assistant, his confidant, someone who could always get his ear. But it was a friendship that began with a chance encounter when John was starting the magazine George, renting office space in Manhattan, sharing the same floor of the PR company Rose worked for. He moved into my office one weekend, and um, I came in on Monday morning, and I was not pleased. And as someone once said, who was in the office at the time, you could have been arrested in some states for the way you just spoke to him. <laughs> so I was really unhappy about that, and I was moving into a much smaller office. So, but it wound up so that, that went from indifference to dislike. Right, yeah, <laughs> that's, uh, it seems that way. But it also was a little bit of a spark of a friendship. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Um, I think John's wit and sense of humor was what really won me over. He was very wise. He was very intelligent. And he was also someone who loved practical jokes, loved, you know, he loved to tease. Now, you got to see it all mm -hmm. there because you worked closely with him. You were friends. You were helping him grow the magazine and the business. What did you learn about what kind of person he was and how he dealt with everything that was coming his way? Well, there's something about manners that go a long way. John had impeccable manners, and it wasn't something that he thought about. He rarely made assumptions. He went into every situation, you know, open, willing to listen, patient, and, you know, he was very wise. On that ill-fated day in July of 1999, the plane John was piloting crashed into the Atlantic off Martha's Vineyard. Rosemary had been staying at the Kennedy's apartment in New York City when she got the phone call. I mean, that had to be very frightening. Yeah, it was. It was. And the only thing that I could do was to behave as if he were still there. What would he, how would I do it if he were still here? And as it became fact mm -hmm. that he wasn't coming back, they were gone, the plane was gone, what was it like for you to deal with that? It was difficult. It was very difficult. You lose someone suddenly, you lose someone dramatically. It's, it's very difficult. You're not prepared. And you couldn't hide from it. Because you had the work of winding things up there without him around. Right, right. There is a lot of history wrapped up in everything about him, mm -hmm. even packing up his house. There are all these things in there you have to mm -hmm. be specially sensitive to. Mm -hmm. You had to deal with all that. Yeah, yeah. But I, I mean, I think I would have been specially sensitive to everything anyway. Over the years, Rosemary has been approached by countless media outlets asking for her story, but she's always declined. Now she's decided to speak out for a very special reason. You've always said no. Mm -hmm. You didn't want to talk to the media. You do it now. Why? I think because um, it was really important to me to see that with the 20-year 20, 20 anniversary of the JFK Junior Institute reaching up, I didn't think that there was going to be as great of an opportunity as there is now. In 1989, John founded Reaching Up, a nonprofit organization that provides educational opportunities to healthcare workers who aid the disabled. Today, his legacy continues and Reaching Up is stronger than ever. It's become the John F. Kennedy Jr. Institute at the City University of New York. And it was really important to John that this program survive without him, with him, and um, I think he'd be really, really proud of the work they're doing today. An idea central to the current dialogue about health care reform. John's idea was ahead of its time, a foresight that may have indicated a gift for leadership. There was always the big question about him. Would he follow in his family's footsteps? Do you think he had politics on the brain? I think that um, there, it was something that he thought about. 
there was certainly an interest, but I think that John was someone who thought when you and if you do this, you need to do it very carefully and you need to be really prepared. And I think what he was really doing was focusing on making George successful. And he was really proud of it. When you think about what we have lost mm -hmm. not having John, what do you think we have lost? Well, I think, um, I think for me, I lost a mentor, a great teacher, and a very dear friend. Almost a thousand people have gone through the Reaching Up program now. It's still going very strong. Uh, Rosemary now runs RMT. Those are her initials. PR management, she says, great guiding principle for her clients is something John taught her. Nothing is as good or bad as it seems in the moment. Equilibrium. Mm. That's what he had. And grace. Oh, yes. And grace.